what in the heck is this? Any guess? Nope. Well, I guess the title will say it. This is a valve alto trombone. This is an extremely rare instrument. Mouthpiece, not so much. Um, but there are only a few examples of this kind of thing ever made in the world. Uh, most of them are museums. I've seen photos of them like once or twice. I guess there may be a Chinese company or two that tries to make them, but they are totally extinct or at least very endangered. This particular one was made by Kahn, who made a lot of innovative instruments like weird cornet redesigns and the mellophonium. Um, this was developed in the 1910s, uh, apparently for the Navy to use. Um, what I was told about valve trombones is they were partially developed for opera pits because there's not a lot of vertical space for a slide. And the same can be said for marching bands, which have to be in small formations. That's why a lot of them use things that are wrapped up like cornets or vertical. And so this still has the trombone shape. And it has three piston valves, just like a normal thing. You've got a tuning slide, you got all the slides you need, but it gives it that sound. And this is a particularly beautiful example. You can see here, well, you can see this, but there's this beautiful uh, engraving uh, made by Con Elkhart, Indiana, um, back when they wanted to make instruments very beautiful in that way. Um, so the date I was given on this, based on the serial number, is 1919. Uh, it came with its original case, which is pretty astonishing. I do not own this instrument. It is on loan to me, uh, and I'm very grateful for that. Um, but enough chatter. Let's just see why anybody would want to play this. <laughs> range so if you want to play higher with more facility or alto trombone parts or alto horn parts with a little more of an edge suddenly you have the instrument for you um, I've played a couple alto trumpets before um, this is really easy to play I'm normally a trumpet player but I play a lot of alto horn um, but there is not much resistance in this it is not blaring either it's a really nicely balanced horn uh, to give you the, the control you need to do that edge, uh, but also play very softly. Um, it's actually very remarkably well made, and Khan didn't always make their weird instruments very well. I've heard that the mellophonium is really terrible intonation. The intonation is per actually pretty good on this. Um, I would say one problem is ergonomics. Um, so on this side, you can see I can fit my hand here and support some weight under with a thumb. But over here, you know, I mean, well, you can see this, I'm going to tip the bell down. I'm kind of gripping the whole valve section under here with my thumb. I don't know if that's how you're supposed to do it, but at least for my hands and my body, that's the only way I can support the weight of the instrument with this hand. Um, I would also say that I would have liked a little bit more space between the mouthpiece and this pipe. Um, I have to usually wiggle this around a bit get my head in there and it's just maybe I just have a really fat neck um, but it seems like I would like just smidge more room but I can fit it in there um, so maybe uh, people in the Navy in World War One had really skinny necks and this was made for them uh, let's do a little more playing <laughs> get lyrical. I'll end with uh, my favorite horn and piano piece, uh, Glasnost's Reverie, just the opening of that.
lovely instrument. I wish I could own it. I don't. Maybe someday. If you ever see one of these, please let me know because I'd really like to have one. A 1919 Con Valve Alto Trombone. An incredibly rare instrument that I have great privilege of trying and sharing with you for this video. So, thank you very much.